Hey guys, uh, we are here live, and uh, Pastor Zach, we're, we're, it's a little hot up here. <laughs> Made a last minute, a last minute wardrobe change. Wardrobe change, costume change. The hoodie was too much tonight, <laughs> yeah. so I had to go for just a t-shirt. Yes, and his mug is back. Look, look it. This is a, if y'all remember, a, this is a relic of the, <laughs> of the shutdown, of the quarantine shutdown days. <laughs> yes. If you remember the. When disciple school was just yes. beginning. It's because I took the last plastic cup, so. It had a different name then, too. It did. What did we call it? Did we call know. it anything? I think it was just the, the midweek. That's whenever we had lockers in the back. Yeah. So was like that was disciple fun. school. So. <laughs> I'm wearing my bear shirt mm-hmm. for my youngest, for Phoenix. So, Phoenix, if you're watching, here's the bear. The bear. She always points at it and <laughs> says, rah. So. You know what? I'm actually gonna get on the on the live over here on uh, Facebook real quick, just to see how we're doing and share it as well, because we need to share. Do you have your phone on you? Oh, uh, I left it over there on the desk. Should I get it? Yeah, it'll be okay. Okay. Jo- Jody will help us out. Jody will help us out. Jody English is in here with us. Woo, we love Jody! Her. She's like, I won't laugh. I won't do anything like that. But we're like, please laugh. We we need to feel like we're funny. And Jody's main job is to make sure that I'm okay. <laughs> <laughs> that's 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 the that's ninety five percent of Jody's job. Yes. Okay. I'm sharing this. Oh, there's Josh, Pastor Josh. Hey Josh. And Sarah, my friend and my my boss. Hey Sarah. Good Orlando to see you. Ramos. Oh Orlando. Hey buddy. Yeah, from Ardmore. I was uh just in Ardmore beginning of February. Uh I yeah, spoke you were. there on Sunday. I yeah. didn't see you, Orlando. Um I hope I didn't miss you. Uh, they're they're having a baby. Orlando is? Yeah, Orlando. Oh yeah. Congratulations. Yeah. Um and uh <laughs> So Sarah Lewis and I, uh, we were recording something for the the campus pastors, Mm -hmm. uh, for the community campuses, talking about Easter and all that kind of stuff regarding social media. And we recorded it right over there on my couch. Mm -hmm. And, you know, usually right where we're sitting, I have a, uh, a coffee table. And she got up really quick. And she came back, and she just about face planted. Oh no! Uh, into the couch, and so she said, "Just watch out for her table. It it jumps out at you when you got up." I think she got it's rid of the here. table. No, it's out in the hallway. It's, 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 it's a liability. <laughs> it's a liability. Um, we have good insurance, but it's not that good. <laughs> so, oh, and Sarah said you killed it at Ardmore. Oh, you, thank you. you were at Ardmore, she loved thank it. Thank you. We had a good time. Hi, Rebecca. And Mandy Seymour. I think I saw uh, Kendall. Chahoy, our friend Kendall. I'm not seeing. I'd, I thought I just saw Kendall. Kendall and James. Uh, I don't see it. Yeah, right there. Look. Am I blo- Oh. Oh, wait. No, am I? Am I? I think you're not. Um, I, I totally think you thought, need new glasses. I totally <laughs> thought I just saw Kendall Chahoy. <laughs> I'm sorry. Kendall's not. <laughs> That says something totally oh, no. different. It'll say Rebecca and and I don't know how Kel- to say Craig. I, oh, hey, Kendall is here. here! I knew it! I knew it! That, She's that here! Was, that was prophetic. She's here. That was not on there. Kendall, Jody's here too. <laughs> I think you guys just got connected. Oh man! At disciple school. <laughs> I knew she was here. James is close by oh, too. Oh man! Paige Scott is on. Hey there. Hey Paige. All right, so we're gonna get started. Let's do it. And we were, uh, we're gonna be talking about what Pastor Jacob uh, spoke on, basically like who's your God. Yes. Um, and from Sunday. From Sunday. In uh, church on mission. In the church on mission, the and church we on have mission. that that process of uh, inspiration, revelation, integration, and transformation. Yeah. Um, and it, it it's it's not just a one time, one and done Mm-mm. thing going on and and uh and pastor zach uh we were talking earlier yeah uh and it right after the service we we kind of talked i felt like you know there are people when we talk about that process Mm -hmm. 
that it can seem daunting. Sounds like work. It sounds like work. It sounds like um, work that is almost, you're like, well, I feel like I need to drop something else like, mm-hmm. you know, my real job, or, you know, like my, my, my paid job or something to be able to focus on that. Mm-hmm. Um, but it was really, I've had a, a couple people recently come to me and say they're, they're dealing with depression. Mm. And, uh, and, and I was just sitting, look, listening through the lens of, cause I dealt with that for a long time. And, uh, and I said, I want, I feel like back then it would have just seemed mm-hmm. impossible to me. Um, so we want to, we want to kind of talk on that and uh and see see what we can you're looking for something i am <laughs> i am i'm listening to the holy spirit and you at the same yeah. time <laughs> i don't know if that's a good idea uh for me <laughs> if that makes sense <laughs> it's a good idea to listen to holy spirit but uh but but what i want to encourage you guys is that unknowingly like without having names to the process that's the process I went through to actually come out of depression. Mm. Um, you know, I I had I was inspired a lot. Like I, even just recognizing, I would say the inspiration part was recognizing that depression was in my life. Yeah. And then and then the revelation was you know years later, uh, when I was reading Psalm forty two eleven, mm-hmm. and. Uh, why my soul are you downcast? So like actually talking to his soul, mm-hmm. um, and and saying why my soul are you downcast? Why so disturbed within me? And he starts to boss his soul around. He said, "Put your hope in God, for I will yet praise Him, my God and my Savior." Um, so that that was a revelation for me. Yeah. I, I was like, I can tell my soul what to do, mm-hmm. um, but that is not going to happen overnight your soul isn't going to listen to you just like that. Oh yeah, absolutely. You know, so it it was a, it was a thing that I really had to, I had to practice. I had to train myself. Mm -hmm. And that led to transformation. That led to transformation. The inspiration that you got from the Holy Spirit when you recognized that battle that you were facing, the revelation on how to Mm -hmm. deal with it, but then it took integration of actually, and because we've talked and because we're friends outside of just yeah. We just don't talk on the camera. Right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that process for you had a lot to do with gratitude, mm-hmm. intentional practices of gratitude. Yeah. And that integration led to a transformation in your life. And I think that anytime we're dealing with something that's painful, yeah. uh, anything that looks like more work, we, revo- we avoid. Yeah. Uh, and the integration part of it seems like work. Yeah. Uh, and it is. It is. Uh, but it's a grace-inspired work. And mm-hmm. as you were talking, um, Philippians chapter 2, verse 13 came into my heart. And I'll, I'll read verse 12. And uh, Paul's wrapping this up. And he says, Therefore, my beloved, as you have always obeyed, so now not only in, as in my presence, but much more in my absence, uh, all the parents will say, "Amen." You want you, you want your kids to not just obey in your presence. The yes. the main thing you're trying to get is for them to do the right thing in your absence. And Paul's talking to his spiritual children here uh, at the church in Philippi, and he says, "Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling." In verse mm-hmm. thirteen. This is key, for it is God who works in you, both to will and to work for His good pleasure. Something happens whenever we understand that the integration is really just us surrendering to the work that God's already doing on the inside of us. Right. There is a work to be done, and our part to play in it is surrender to the Lord, obeying His precepts, coming into alignment with His Word, both written Mm -hmm. and living. And when we do that, God's the one that transforms. No human being can take credit for their own transformation. Uh, Even the things that are part of, of the integrating spiritual disciplines, spiritual practices, prayer, being in the Word, all those things don't change you in and of themselves. Right. They create pathways for you to connect with the risen Lord Jesus in yeah. real time, and Jesus alone mm-hmm. transforms. He's the only one that can perform the transformation that the human heart needs. He's the only one that heals us. He is the one that delivers us right. and saves us from all of our, from all of our affliction, from mm-hmm. all of our own devastation. 
So I've always loved this passage out of Philippians because what it reminds me is there's a work that God's already doing on the inside of me that I just need to cooperate with. Yeah. Uh, a spiritual father to me, Pastor Mark Carrillo, mm -hmm. I love what he taught me, and that's this, that God's only limitation in your life is your lack of cooperation. Uh, yeah. What we have to do is partner with God. Like, who wants you more free from depression than God? Like, who yeah. wants you more free from sickness than mm -hmm. God? Jehovah Rapha, God who heals you. Yeah. Healing and deliverance isn't just something that he does in his spare time. It's who he is. He can't yeah. help it. Right. It's who he is. When we don't he's have to around, look for the healing. We seek the healer. The healer. So all these things, when we talk about the inspiration, the revelation, and the integration, the integration, applying these scriptural principles to our lives, um, that's not something that we take credit for. Mm -hmm. It's these practices that help us get better in alignment and in, better into alignment and better in tune with the one from whom the power flows. Right. Jesus the Christ. Christ means the anointed one. Mm -hmm. And the scripture tells us that it's the anointing that breaks the yoke. So it's the anointed one with the anointing mm -hmm. that breaks the yoke of whatever burden that we're carrying. And uh, whenever we obey his word, notice Paul <laughs> says this in the context of obedience, integration is obedience. Yeah, uh, It's what I've been talking about in disciple school with the book of James. We mm -hmm. can't just be a hearer. Oh, that's going to happen this next this next week. We've got first Wednesday service this week. Yes. Next, next week's week. video is not just being a hearer of the word, but a doer. Mm -hmm. um, you can read the psalm. Uh, which one did you say it was that brought... Psalm 42, 11. Why are you downcast on mm -hmm. my soul? Why are you in turmoil within me? Uh, you, you can read that, but then through Revelation, when you see David talking to his soul and you understand the authority that you've been given mm -hmm. through Jesus on the inside of you and the power of the Holy Spirit, that you can actually tell your emotions what they're supposed to be doing right. instead of live at their mercy. Right. Because if we go back to Pastor Jacob's message from Sunday, he's asking the question, who is your God? For a lot of people, emotions are their God. Yeah. Uh, and he said, your God is whatever you trust and obey. Right. So if we say that God, the God of the Bible, is who we trust and obey, then the book of Philippians tells us that part of that obedience is a confession mm. and a posturing of living that believes that God's working something in me that I can't do by myself. Right. I have no ability to do it. And part of the integration is just learning how to surrender and get into cooperation with that. Right. And it's through pathways like those spiritual disciplines, the gratitude that you started applying. Mm -hmm. uh, Psalm 100 tells us that we enter his, his courts with... Uh, I will enter his gates with thanksgiving. I will enter his courts with praise. I always have to sing the song. <laughs> Jody knows that because I, I forget. If it's his gates and his courts, it means he's on the other side of them. Yep. And the quickest way, to, to, I believe, to interact with the manifest presence of God is through gratefulness and thanksgiving mm -hmm. yeah. because of that song. Yeah. So whenever we practice gratefulness, what are we doing? We're entering into the gates and the courts. Come on. I'm getting excited. You would enter into the <laughs> gates and the courts of the one who heals us. Yeah. Depression can't stand in the presence of God. No. When you think about the all-consuming fire that is Jehovah Rapha, God who heals you, how can the fiery dart of depression hold up? It's like it's like trying to hold a, a, a match to the sun. Mm -hmm. But we have to, with intentionality, yep. begin to take these steps, these steps forward and all and these we, different and, kinds of things. And it's kind of like that, what's that quote? Like you don't drift into righteousness or whatever. It's no, not something you just drift into. No. Like you said, there is intention. Intentionality. It's a it's a training. Yes. Um, training your soul for gratitude. Training mm -hmm. your soul to to love to praise God. Yes. Um, that it you have to you have to train for that. And something that, um, you know, I I had done a podcast with um with uh oh my goodness Paige. Paige, uh, with Paige Scott, um, and and did a thing called you know training your soul for gratitude, mm -hmm. and in studying for that, um, you know it was the first time I had heard it, but a, a thing called a neuroplasticity. Plasticity. Yes, and and it's really just um, and. And the thing about it, it's like it's like rewiring your brain, mm -hmm. essentially. Yep. Um, but it takes an activation mm -hmm. to do it. So if you have a weak activation, there's going to be a weak response. Like there's not going to be a, a, a 
uh, like that synapsis that really yes. triggers you into uh, into that. Like, and after that does happen, if you do have a strong reaction mm-hmm. activation in that, there's a stewarding that happens for that. It has to be repetitive yes. for it to actually stick. Yes. Um, and my best friend Bethany. She was saying, because I was asking her, I was like, does this make sense to you the way I'm explaining it? Mm-hmm. And she's and she's a science teacher. And she actually teaches this mm-hmm. uh, to her students. And she said, because, you know, she teaches teenagers. Uh, and their their brains are going through all kinds of stuff, mm-hmm. uh, you know, physically. Hormones. And, oh. We might talk about some of that. My my son <laughs> is a year my son is a year away from being a teenager, so mm-hmm. I pray. Pray Jody's for me. interceding already. <laughs> She's already interceding. <laughs> She's like, I'm done with that. <laughs> but she said, you know, like, but what she tells him is that I'm helping train your brain. And it's like riding so it's like learning to ride a bicycle and and I'm there with you. Mm-hmm. And when she said that, she's like, God's there with you. Yes. God is there with you. And and there's training wheels. We would take the training wheels off, but I'm still there. Yes. And then eventually you learn how to do it and mm-hmm. you just do it. It's like riding a bike. That's right. Because it's something you don't forget how to do mm-hmm. because You're, it's wired into your brain. Oh, naturally, our brains are programmed in a way that the neuron pathways that form, because uh, anyway, I could I could get really yeah. detailed. I don't, <laughs> we, we have electricity that's actually running our brain. And those electrical impulses are carving out pathways in the actual gray matter of our brain. And anytime something becomes habitual for you, it's like a it's like a highway has been paved in your brain. Yeah. And your brain will naturally always take the path of least resistance. Mm-hmm. So whatever is an open highway, a green light. Yeah. And the reason why it's hard and it takes a discipline, it takes an intentionality to learn a new habit or to learn a new skill is your brain is actually being sculpted yeah. by those electrical impulses in in a, in, a, in a blank way. It's like going in, creating a highway in the middle of just a field. Mm-hmm. The, the trees have to be cleared, and then the ground has to be plowed, and there's prep work that has to happen so yeah. that that information highway can now be formed, and that's why uh, coming out of addictive behaviors oftentimes mm-hmm. is so challenging yeah. is because you have a literal muscle memory associated mm-hmm. with that particular thing. And I love what uh, what Paul writes to us and says about be not tra- uh, conformed to the world, mm-hmm. but be transformed by the renewing of your minds. Right. God never asked for us whenever we got saved for our minds to be removed. Right. He actually calls our minds to be renewed. Mm-hmm. And our mind is, is one of our greatest gifts that God has given to us. And so much so that, okay, Paul also refers to Jesus as the patterned son. Jesus is the Mm, first in a long line of brothers and sisters. And he tells the Corinthian church that through the Holy Spirit, they have been given the mind of Christ. So think about this. God, through the Holy Spirit, has deposited in us the patterned son, Jesus. Mm. Jesus, who's first in a long line of brothers and sisters. He's deposited his mind on the inside of us by the Holy Spirit as a template yeah. as a blueprint for even our natural mind to be formed after what's the gap that, that closes that process. It's integration. Right. It's learning to practice the things that Jesus practiced mm-hmm. so that we can close the gap between that mind of Christ and our mind. And it's the Holy Spirit that, that empowers that. Um, because in our spirit, we know that when we're born again, we're made the very righteousness of God in Christ. Our spirit man, the innermost part of who we are, is completely perfect, right. as close to God as it'll ever be. Mm-hmm. But our soul, our mind, our will, and our emotions, and our bodies are in the process of a of a of a regeneration, of a renewal. Mm-hmm. And our soul ultimately is going to be a gatekeeper on on what's going to happen in our in in our in our in our physical being. Yeah. When our soul gets into alignment with our spirit. The natural byproduct is the flesh, the body responds. Yeah. But when our soul gets into alignment with our flesh, what happens now? We resist the work of our born again righteous spirit on the inside of us. In the Philippians passage, that's where the work of God is happening, yeah. is in our spirit. 
Paul says, he that's joined to the Lord is one spirit with the Lord. So there actually is a divine pl- blueprint for the very mind of Christ on the inside of you that God wills to manifest in your natural mind. Yeah, that's good. That's awesome. That It's, it's amazing that, that God, you know, because we can talk, like, the science on it as well. Like God designed our brains in such yes. a fascinating way. He did. And, and he made them able to uh, to uh, be neuroplast- uh, neuroplastic, Neuro- yeah. which means that they regenerate, mm. which means that they have the ability to be to be carved. It's like it's like yeah. a sculptor. Yeah. God has the ability through the template on the inside of you, which is invisible mm-hmm. by the Spirit, if you surrender through intentional practices <laughs> uh, of 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 spiritual living, being a disciple. If you will allow the things of the scripture to be integrated into your life, you create a pathway of partnership between you and the Lord yeah. for him to sculpt your natural mind yes. after the mind of Jesus. Right. Isn't, it, that, isn't that incredible? Yes. In, or, in, in order, I think, I feel like you said this, at least you were the first one in my life to say it. So I say that you're the one that, that came up with it. G- give me the but, credit. Uh, give me I'll the give credit. you the credit. <laughs> Uh, but you know, like in in order for there to be supernatural, we have to do something in the natural, yes, or just be super. <laughs> That's right. You know, we we the have na- to have that supernatural. The nature of the spirit, mm-hmm. just the realm of the spirit. The book of Hebrews says this: all things that are visible are made from that which is invisible. Mm-hmm. The nature of the spirit of the spirit realm is invisibility. Things that are invisible don't cease being real. Right. They're real entities. They're just not visible. Right. And the nature of the spirit is that it's always seeking an avenue through which it can materialize itself. Mm-hmm. That's good. Always. Yeah. So these natural practices let us connect with mm-hmm. spiritual realities to see them manifested into real time. Uh, we have to learn how to surrender to the right spirit. Yes. And the right and, and the right spirits. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that's a whole other thing. That's a whole there's so many uh, layers. <laughs> there's and, and even yeah. on the subject of depression, there's so many different. You know, that's one that you bring up because it's it's close yeah. to home for you, something that you've walked through. And there's so many different causes and reasons for that. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's so many different things that go on in people's lives, and I am not so narrow-minded to say yeah. that there's only one cause of this or whatever it might be. But we do have to, at the end of the day, have to know that there are legitimate spirits Mm -hmm. that wage war against us and that seek to keep us trapped in darkness. Anybody that's walked through depression will tell you it is dark. It is. It is not of God. It's not God's will for your life to be be depressed. And and it's not just a like, oh, I'm not depressed anymore. Mm -mm. It was that that long obedience in the right direction. Yes. And and I realized one day, I was like, I don't hate myself. Mm -hmm. Like, it's just the realization comes up and you're like, whoa. Mm -hmm. Um, It's just like staying faithful to God through, through it all. And yes. Um, it's a, that's a big deal. I, I want to, um, Wes, well, I'm going to read this to you, Pastor okay. Zach. Uh, Wes Wilson, and I have been receiving so much from this series. It is time to move our spiritual growth as a unified church to maturity and to understand how important it is for each member of our body to be living for their purposes, which is all to work, to, which all work together for our good to see people transform to properly worship God and to be operating in our gifts, to be an active body, holy, pleasing, and acceptable to God. Great. Um, awesome. Yeah. I agree Thank with that. You. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll pass it on to Pastor Jacob. If he's, yes. if, he's not, if he's not watching, we don't know if he is or not. He might be. He might be. <laughs> and, and Jamie says, I am hearing it, Pastor Zach, literal transformation of our minds. Amen. Yeah. That's good. Yes. Literal. It is literal. Yeah. God's a very literal God. He's not just, he's not figurative. He's not just metaphoric. Yeah. Um, it's, it's a powerful, it's a powerful reality. Mm-hmm. When we understand and know that this transformation is a literal thing, mm-hmm. like God has the ability to totally transform who we are. Yeah. Uh, and, and he's done that already through our connectivity with, uh, with the Holy Spirit. Um, but now the process is us to experience that in our soul. And the promise from the Lord is there will come a day 
that even our bodies will be transformed. Yeah. Come on. In, Come on, in, Jesus. In, in, <laughs> in the resurrection Yeah. Uh, that we'll all experience in the day of the Lord's return. Uh, we will have glorified, uh, perfected bodies. Yeah. So all Amen. roads lead to transformation. Hallelujah. Praise Jesus. And Pastor Jacob said he is here. Hey, hey. Pastor Jay. Good to see you. <laughs> Oh man, uh, what? Where were we going? I don't know. I've lost my. I've been looking. Thought, Jody. I've been looking. I've Jody, been looking to you. You gotta keep us on track. I've been looking to you. <laughs> She's shaking her head. No, she said, "Don't you make me a part of this." <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Oh. Um. So. Hmm. Uh, there, let me go to my notes. Okay. If you have something, you you just let me know. But I I made a note earlier, and I'm trying to remember. I think. Oh. Oh, good. Sorry. Um. The the whole thing. Uh. Reiterating that this process mm -hmm. of Aaron calls it my husband. He he calls it I write. Mm -hmm. Because I said I R I T, so he's like I write part of my story. Yeah, he he, my husband does those things. <laughs> so the I write process um, is what I've been calling it affectionately for my husband. He, um, but it's not that inspiration, one, yeah. revelation, integration, transformation. Yes, it's not just that one. It's not a one time thing. No, like once you think that you've, uh, you know finished a process a new one has started mm. it's not linear it's circular yeah it's it's it's, 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 it's always continual. it's always happening it's and, continual um like because i i've gotten inspired and like i have lived in that in that perpetual state of inspiration and revelation like i was just stuck on that part of the cycle mm -hmm. like that was the only cycle i had mm -hmm. you know what i mean like we 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 tend to do that sometimes and um but because that's the, that's the place that feels the best. Oh, yeah. It's great. It, it, there's you, something that, that happens. It's like a... You, talk, a... you talked a little bit about this on the phone today with one of those first steps with you of coming out of depression. Mm -hmm. You said getting off the couch and making yeah. the decision to just wash one, one dish. dish in the sink. Yep. Like, that's the integration mm -hmm. of actually doing... I've had an, insp an inspired word from God that tells me mm -hmm. you're stuck in depression. Revelation of how to get out of it. Integration is get up and do something different than you've been doing. Mm -hmm. Access grace to do something that you cannot do in your own strength, that you do not feel like doing. Yeah, because my mind was actually telling me you're going to be way more tired than you what you already are. Yeah. And I was Just like, well, I here. can't handle that. Don't move. Yeah, I yep. can't handle that. And so, like, that 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 uh, activation, if you will, for mm -hmm. for the for the neuro neuroplasticity, that activation is that you know, it says you need a strong one. But but the thing is with with the integration, I think what a lot of people like that and this is just me, I feel like I'm hearing Holy Spirit, uh, like hearing all these voices, but um, but you're thinking I have to do this big, huge thing um, to yep. start the integration mm -hmm. process. Um, but what is big to you? Mm -hmm. What seems impossible to you? What what you know? Because that washing that one dish from the outside looking in, they're like, she's never gonna make it. Yep. But to me, that was a win. The only thing we're called to do is trust and obey. Yeah. Pastor Jacob on Sunday talking about your God is ultimately whoever or whatever you trust and obey. Mm -hmm. So in that moment, trust and obedience for you was to get up and to say, I'm moving forward by, not by my own strength, but by the power of the Holy Spirit. I'm washing this one dish. And you know what's awesome? In a way, that's exactly after the Spirit what God was doing in your mind. Yeah. Washing, washing that dirt of depression on that one yeah. part of your mind. There's just, man, everything is spiritual. Mm -hmm. And when we see that and we ever understand that, all those dishes in the sink are there yeah. because there's all this emotional dirt and clutter on the yeah. inside of you. 
100%. And if we will just yield to the Spirit, if we will just follow the subtle prompting, it's just about cooperation. Yeah. God is already doing this in mm-hmm. our mind. But when we cooperate with it, that Philippians passage comes to life. Comes to life. Uh, who, whoever's watching this that might be struggling with a similar thing, God is working mm-hmm. in you. You just get into agreement with it. Yeah. But the reason why we hang out in the inspiration and the revelation because that's what feels good. Mm-hmm. That's what feels the best. The integration makes us actually have to typically experience pain. Mm-hmm. And we, as just a culture at large in, in the Western church, we have an allergy to anything that's <laughs> painful. We, we, we resist pain and we seek out pleasure. Mm-hmm. And whenever we do that, that's often why so many of us get stuck mm-hmm. is because the integration by nature involves pain. Yeah at some level, but it's not a pain that, uh, see, the the lie of the enemy is the pain of torment is something that you can live with, Mm -hmm. but the pain that leads you to freedom is something you can't bear. Right. That's the lie. That's the lie. The lie is, no, the pain that leads to freedom, I can endure momentarily because on the other side of it is freedom. The Mm -hmm. pain that comes from torment is perpetual. Yeah. You never get out of that cycle. No. Um, and it's not that um, the integration piece ever totally ceases to be pain, painless, but even in regards to the subject of, uh, you know, spiritual disciplines, which is a huge part of this integration, uh, I, and Pastor Jacob's watching, so he can throw in the comments if I, if yeah. I get this part wrong. I'm pretty sure it's, uh, Pastor Jacob, you can tell us, I know it's either Foster or Willard, but who is it that says the whole point of the disciplines is freedom? Like we engage in the disciplines to arrive at freedom. I think it's Willard. I know he's your guy, so fact check me. Throw that into the comments <laughs> so that we can be we can be sure that we get yeah. that right. But the whole point of the disciplines, the whole point of the integration is freedom. Mm-hmm. And freedom looks like what? Transformation. Living transformed. Yeah. So whatever it is, take one step. It can feel daunting. It can seem like work, like yeah. to be a disciple of Jesus and to actually integrate this book in my mm-hmm. life. How can I do that? When I don't feel like I can get up off the couch. Yeah. How can I do that when I have chronic uh, disease or mm-hmm. sickness or pain in my body? How can I do that when I feel like I get no breakthrough in my marriage at all? Every day is another fight. Every day is another struggle. How can I do that when I feel overwhelmed mm-hmm. by the stress at work? How, how can I do that? I think there's uh, one word in there that is the issue. And the word is I. I? How can I? God's at work in you, both to will and to perform Mm -hmm. by his good pleasure. What did he say who it was? Richard Foster. I was Foster. Celebration of Discipline. I was so so close. I knew it was one of the two. We just gave that book away. We did. Yeah, to Mike Shaw. He should be getting it on Thursday. The whole point of the disciplines is freedom. The whole point of integration is transformation. Yeah. I put up with the pain of integration because I know on the other side of it is mm-hmm. transformed. Yeah. It, it, it's me being transformed. Once you do it, when you do it once, when it's your first time to really, to do to knowingly do it. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, at the time I didn't knowingly do it, but now I know that I have done it. And I'm like, sorry, I'm looking over at Jody. I should be looking at you guys. <laughs> <laughs> but Jody, you know, she's right there behind the camera. Um, and she's smiling. So... She's the one that gets my okay, but uh, but but it it it's something like, wow, I, it is possible, and it's not as painful as I thought. It's it's painful. It's yes. hard. But it's nothing compared to the pain no. of the torment. No, it's nothing compared to the pain of continuing to live in apathy or atrophy. Mm-hmm. Um, it's the, it's 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 definitely a cost. But it's a cost that we're willing to pay because it gets us it gets us free. Yeah. It gets us free. It's partnership with the Lord. Mm-hmm. So that I mean, to me, because that's the run of the main questions that you kind of frame even in our conversation today, what how do we encourage people that feel like there's just no way I can take take that on mm-hmm. that process? Like I, I can't move into a place of really integrating anything. I can't yeah. add anything else to my life. Mm-hmm. Actually, you can't afford not to. Right. right. There's no other way that leads to freedom than surrendering to the Lord. There's no other way that leads to life right. in peace than, than, than obedience. Mm-hmm. That's why I started with that Philippians passage. So much of what Pastor Jacob spoke about on Sunday was us obeying God. Yeah. Uh, even when we don't feel like it, even when we feel like we're, we're, we're drowning, we're going mm-hmm. under, 
that's when we have to have that uh, psalm uh, pep psalm, talk. Yes. Okay, so listen, you're yeah. you're depressed, all right? But that's also so much. This has to do with identity too. Yeah. Because you even ha- you have to be able to separate how you feel mm-hmm. from who you actually are. Yeah. See, I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. Mm-hmm. Jesus Christ is not depressed. He's not. But you know, you know what? He's experienced it. Yeah, he says, yeah. He's experienced it. We see that. Uh, he's, anyway, a lot, lot of different things I could say of that. Uh, the book of Hebrews tells us that in Jesus we don't have a high priest that can't sympathize with us, but in all ways he is like us, tested, tempted, and tried, yet mm-hmm. without sin. Right. Okay? Uh, experiencing depression is not a sin. Nope. It's just part of being human. It's just it's part, it's part of being a human being. Thank you for saying that. It's not. Come on. It's not. Yeah. Uh, be, being being stuck in it. Uh, Isaiah sixty one. I've come to proclaim liberty, uh, to to a release to the prisoners and to those that are bound or whatever. There's a difference between prisoners and captives. Jesus has come to free both. Yeah. Prisoners are in are in torment and in bondage because of their own choices. Mm-hmm. People that arrive in a place of prison in the natural is because of them choosing to break the law. In most cases, I know there's people that get imprisoned illegit- illegitimately and they're innocent. But the majority of the time, prison is because of being making the wrong choice. Mm-hmm. Captives, however, are in that situation because of something that happened against their will. Yeah. I feel that so much of, especially something like depression, is a captive situation. Something's happened in their life. Something's going on. A lot of times it's happened against their will. Jesus has come to provide freedom for both. Mm -hmm. Even if something's your own fault, the reason why you're bound, Jesus still comes to bring freedom to you and transformation. Uh, And that captive situation is is also true. But uh, Jesus has has experienced everything that we deal with as, as humans. He was without sin, though. Yeah. So Jesus has the ability to relate to us in this. I guarantee you, Jesus was dealing with the weight of what it feels like to be abandoned, mm-hmm. to be alone, to be isolated, to be depressed while he was experiencing the road to Calvary and on the cross. Right. The scriptures speak to us of this. Yes. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Sounds like a pretty sad experience. Yeah. Right? But in the middle of that, we also have to know, and there's so much that we can go into, <laughs> even even in what he's quoting right there, because he's quoting scripture, yeah, um, and what even some of the follow up verses is. But anyways, all I'm trying to say is, it's okay for us to have a human moment, and it's okay for us to have that human emotion. But when we understand our identity, mm-hmm. remember, after our spirit, we're one with Christ. Our truest identity, who we really are, in the words of the Apostle Paul, is we no longer live. It's Christ that lives in us. And it's in Christ that we live and move and have our very being. So the ability to talk to your soul Mm -hmm. is you being able to recognize that you have a soul, but you're not your soul. Right. You are a spirit, and you have a soul, and you live in a body. Yep. So when I understand who I am after the spirit, I can talk to my soul and say, soul, you're depressed today, but guess what? I'm still going to praise my God. I'm still going to praise my, my God. Why are you downcast on my soul? Why are you in, why are you in turmoil within me? Yet, I will mm-hmm. praise you. Yeah. Who Soul, you're this, but I, yep. who I am, Speaking is going to, who, who is, I'm going to praise, I'm praise God. And when we do that, we come into an awareness of his presence. Mm-hmm. And at that point in time, it's game over. Yeah. It's game over. And here's the thing. I wouldn't have come to that. If I wasn't actually in the Word, yes, I, like, the integration of the Word. Yes, you you actually have to be reading the Word, and um, and like I'm not trying to make that a religious thing, but it, it was a time whenever when Pastor Jacob and I've told him this a billion times, but he he mentioned in passing uh, in a sermon one Wednesday, <clears throat> and I remember exactly where I was sitting. I was like sitting towards the back. And, um, and he said, I, I'm reading the Gospels in 30 days. It's this, you know, the Bible plan on you version. And I was like, I could do that. And, like, it was a moment I realized I was getting a lot of secondhand revelations. Mm-hmm. I wasn't getting something for myself. Mm-hmm. I was getting spoon-fed, and I was like, I, I need to actually pick up the fork. 
yes and start feeding myself amen um and so i i started reading the word didn't understand a thing of it and i, I started with the gospels and you know how that starts mm -hmm. it's very boring okay i'll just be honest i was very bored at that moment um and and then i was like i don't understand this and holy spirit spoke to me and i you know i have a degree in theater mm -hmm. and he said read it like you would shakespeare I can get on board with that. I know how to read Shakespeare because he writes in pictures. Mm -hmm. Well, guess what? The Bible is so many pictures. Yes. And it was like seeing color for the first time. So I had that that moment. Uh, that was part of that same process. Mm -hmm. You know, like with, with the, the inspiration and the revelation, the integration, all that kind of stuff. Um, the thing is, these things happen and, and sometimes we're not aware of it. But whenever you know that you need to be doing the integration part, oh my goodness. That's right. That's so, yep. it, it, it'll. And think, and, and think about what happens whenever our integration is not reactionary, mm -hmm. but it's preparatory. Yes. What happens whenever our integration is a, is a perpetual cycle of living. Right. Which means that I have stored up plenty in my heart yeah. for the day when famine comes. Right. I've stored up so much manna in my heart that whenever disaster strikes whenever famine comes mm -hmm. me and my house are fed yeah because there's been intentionality on hiding right. the word in my heart i have hid your word in my heart mm -hmm. so that i might not sin against you right is what the scripture tells we, us we can't plan we can't plan that you know when bad things will happen nope. or anything like that but we can prepare our hearts mm -hmm. um it, you know in preparation for those moments and that's right because they're gonna come not fall apart they're you gonna know? come life, life is tough <laughs> Yeah. Life is tough. But take heart because Jesus has overcome the world. Amen. And he's alive on the inside of us. And we're seated with him in heavenly places. Mm -hmm. And uh, that vantage point, man, when we learn how to access that vantage point, that really does change so much. Everything. Um but we all go we all go through those testings. We all go through mm -hmm. those trials. And even like going back to the the subject of even the depression that we've kind of been going yeah. around. Like, I understand that people are in different seasons and different cycles. Yeah. Ultimately, God's the only one that's going to get you out of it. Right. But we have to know, too, and understand that, um, like I said, there's a lot of different reasons why people are experiencing different things. Mm -hmm. um, God's made our bodies a particular way. And we have to be pursuing not just health in our spirit, not just health in our soul, but health in our body. Yeah. There's been people I know that their, ent their entire disposition changed because they got an inspiration and a revelation to integrate better eating habits into their life, and it led to a trans it, it led to a transformation. Hey, listen, I'm not I'm not here <laughs> right. to preach about better yeah. eating habits. Right. Okay, we'll save that for for another day. I'm hey, still hey, working hey. on the integration in, into my life, but no, I'm talking about in regards to depression yes, yeah. because your body chemistry. Yep. And, and the stuff that we eat in our food can affect your mood. Yeah, absolutely. So part of the integration of just eating better, mm -hmm. I know people that has led to an entirely new disposition. Yeah. And even their emotional health because they just changed what they were just eating. Just drinking water. Just drinking more water. Yeah. Uh, the same thing in regards to uh, hormones. Mm -hmm. God has made natural chemicals in our body that help yep. us function. And if you're low in a particular type of hormone or if you're low in a particular type of vitamin, yeah. a particular type of, of, of core nutrient, it's like not having gas in your gas tank. And sometimes you just need a revelation, an inspiration revelation to incorporate those things into your life. Yeah. And that's why we believe, I mean, I can't say, I believe, okay, that 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 there's that we have to have partnership yeah. between uh, the the things of the spirit, mm -hmm. but then we also have to understand that all things that were created are made from that which is invisible from the spirit book of Hebrews. All things that are visible are made from that which is invisible. Right. God has put things into this world that we need to help us stay in a place of health and 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 balance. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, and even in regards to people that go through dark seasons and then they get on. Uh, antidepressants. Mm -hmm. I don't have a personal, like, for myself is one thing, but if I'm pastoring people through depression, they tell me that they're going to get on an antidepressant or they're going to take this pill. I'm not anti that. I'm not anti antidepressants. Right. I just tell them that I think the best way to view things like that is the same way like a knee brace or a crutch or an ankle brace they're to help you get through a season. Mm -hmm. They're not something that need to become a permanent fixture of your life. 
uh, the same way in regards to any other thing. If I went to the doctor and I found out that, you know, my uh, cholesterol is super high or have mm-hmm. high blood pressure and it's weight related, I'm personally not just going to take a pill for the rest of my life. I'm going to, I'm going to get my rear end active. Yeah. I'm going to do whatever I need to do. And for many of us, hardheads like me, it takes a wake up call like that to say, Hey, yeah. you need to integrate some things. Inspiration revelation is not doing any good. You got to integrate. Yeah. And, and there's lifestyle changes that I can make to lead to transformation mm-hmm. in my life. This is all spiritual Yes. Uh, in so many different, in so many different ways. So even in regards to people that might feel condemned because they're on a some type of a medication, oh, please. even in regards to depression, yeah. don't be condemned. Mm-mm. That might be that might be a brace that you need in this season. Yeah. I just coach people with always work with with whoever your health care provider is, your your mental health provider. Make to sure there's an off ramp. Make sure there's an off ramp. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I believe in only being totally dependent on the Lord. Yeah. And, but that doesn't mean that we don't have other things to help us arrive at those right. at that destination. It might just be a part of the journey. Right. And there's no condemnation in that. So Amen. I just feel like I need to need to it's say just, that. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Um, that I always tell people, uh, you know, there are some people like I will never do that. You know, get on get on that. I was like, well, you know, um, I've had friends who, you know, they they were such in a terrible state that they they couldn't hear even what whenever I was face to face with them they yes. couldn't hear what I was saying yes. so sometimes you know it helps get them to a place where they can hear what you're saying so that the transformation can come yeah yep. so like I That's you know good. sometimes like we just need to help keep you alive for a minute mm-hmm. you know it's like the life That's support right. for just a, life a second support. yep and and help let us help you yes uh, through this you don't do it alone. Sometimes, uh, none you have, of this. sometimes you have to be reached at totally a flesh yes. level, yeah. a body chemistry mm-hmm. level, yeah. so that we can begin to actually open up our mind yes. so that we can actually arrive at spirit. Right. And it's just we want to know where we're headed. And that's ultimately to partner with the work that God's already doing on the inside of us. Yeah. So, so Pastor Zag, um, there was uh, one, one question, and okay. I have probably lost it. Um, and I don't know if you, where did it go? Anyway, Sarah Lewis, she asked if there was a book on, you know, like the brain, if mm-hmm. you were the mind that you would suggest uh, that you can think of on what, the top what's of What's the, oh, it wasn't you. I bought it for, I bought it for two people. It's by Caroline Leaf. Okay, uh, yeah. Switch on your brain or uh, turn on your brain. Uh, yeah, she specializes in, yeah, in that. It really, yeah. honestly, anything Caroline Leaf. If you're if you're interested in more if more of that conversation around a partnership between faith and science, mm-hmm. and especially in regards to, to neuroscience, right? Uh, Caroline Leaf would be a great one. Uh, if Pastor Jacob's still watching, he's a he's a huge reader. Uh, yeah, he can he post something in the comments that might be a good another resource. That's just right. one of the ones that's coming to mind for me. Right, and guys, if you have any questions, uh, I definitely want to, you know, I'll pass it on to to Pastor Zach and all that kind of stuff. So just let me. Or know Jody, we might have Jody, Jody answer questions. She gave you a look. <laughs> She's like, oh, don't do this to me. <laughs> Gloria Linton says she has that book. Awesome. Yeah, that's that's awesome. I think it's switch on your brain. Uh, no, we can Google. If I remember right, uh, Doctor. That that's the one that a lot of people quote from here recently. Ah. Uh, she's the one that kind of put a lot of that terminology out there with neuroplasticity and all that. Right. Made so it more. So switch on your brain. Switch on your brain. Yeah. Mhm. Yep. That's awesome. There's oh. some cool things there. Think and eat yourself smart, she said. Come on, Oof. it's all connected. It's all connected. It's all connected. I just, <laughs> I just personally feel better uh, and think better with a double cheeseburger in my body. So, I mean, Taco spinach, Bell. Spinach doesn't make me happy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'll be, I'll be oh, bad. No. I'll, 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 I'll be get rebuked. <laughs> Serena, if you're watching. <laughs> No, no, don't tell Serena I said that. <laughs> I'm having lunch with her tomorrow. I'm I know. Would you <laughs> help me out? Be a friend. <laughs> Switch on your brain. And, and Sarah Lewis put the, the link in there. Thank you, Sarah. Switch on your brain. 
Uh, we'll, we'll wait just a little bit just in case someone has a question or anything like that. Um, uh, are you hearing anything else? Just No. I think we covered a lot. I, I think there was a lot in that time. Yeah. I know we didn't go a full hour, but mm -hmm. I feel like there's a lot in there, there to, was a to lot, chew on. a lot of stuff to chew on. And, and also, be, be sure to share. Um, there are people probably dealing with this stuff that uh, it, it would help them. I'm not saying, like, I'm so amazing. Oh, good food, Taco Bell, someone said. Let, let, me, yeah. let me just say this, all right? This is an oldie, but a goodie. You remember this one. Don't let a moment, mm. don't let you having a moment stop your movement. Amen. Keep moving forward. Don't let your pain press a pause on you connecting with God's presence. Yeah. Um, don't allow the pain of torment to lie to you to say that you can tolerate it, but you can't tolerate the pain that leads to transformation. Right. Um, and, and it's okay. We all have moments. Mm -hmm. We're all going to have a moment. Um, we might have a breakdown. We might have a blow up. I haven't had any of those. <laughs> we might have a breakdown or a blow up. <laughs> But if you're on the way down, it's okay because you're headed to your knees where yeah. you're going to find your strength. Absolutely. Uh, and just meet the Lord there. And he's so good. He's so patient. He's so kind. Oh, absolutely. Uh, and uh, there's literally nothing that he can't deliver us from. Amen. So no I, matter how big of a mess you might feel you're in, mm -hmm. no matter how you might feel just inundated with stress, pressure, uh, emotional volatility, whatever your relationships might be caving in all around you, uh, God has called you, and, and remember this, that he that has begun a good work in you, tying it back to that Ephesians 2 passage, that it's God that works within you, mm -hmm. both to his will uh, and, and, and by his good pleasure, that he that has begun a good work in you will see it through to completion. We just need to partner with him. Right. Remember, his only limitation is our lack of cooperation. So what do we say? We just say, yes, Lord. Yes. Be it unto me according to your will. Your will for me is freedom. And I feel bound. I feel in chains. But think about even the natural. Paul and Silas in prison in the midnight hour, freshly beaten. <laughs> and in their chains, yeah. they choose to do one thing. The pressure, because they had filled themselves up mm -hmm. with the things of God, even in that dark jail cell in chains, a song started coming out of their hearts. Yeah. And it shook the, the jail it broke the chains. The jailer got saved Come on. and born again. That's good. Your your chained up moment might be the thing that leads to change. Yes. In not just your atmosphere, but change in somebody else's very soul. Mm -hmm. So even if you've got chains, man, turn those things into instruments and start making making yeah. a, a joyful sound of the Lord. You know, there the, the there's song, power in that. The song, um, "Son of Heaven." Mm -hmm. There's a there's a line that said, "With every yes." Your kingdom's coming. Yes. With every yes. With every yes. Every time I choose God, mm -hmm. I, I bring more of his kingdom here on earth. And, and that's... Every time. That's really what the integration is. Yeah. The integration is just saying, the inspiration comes, the revelation comes, and what do we do? We say yes to it. That's the integration. Yeah. And on the other side of that, yes. Because that yes is a surrender. Mm -hmm. And there's no limit to what God can do through a, a surrendered life. Yeah. In a surrendered heart. The, there was one thing that you said. You you said, you know, like there's many different reasons for like depression, anxiety, addiction, or whatever. <laughs> whatever. Whatever you might be dealing with. Sorry. <coughs> Sorry, excuse me. But but there is one solution. One solution. Uh, you We can all say, but what about, but what about this, but what about that? I call them the but what abouts. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, but there's... Just one, one solution, and he's going to help you. He's going he's to. He's with you. He's holding the back of your bike. Yes. And and just ready to, he's not, he's, he's going to let go, but only when he knows you're ready. This is a phrase I said on Wednesday nights in Durant for a long time and, until everybody finally believed it, so then I stopped saying it. But uh, it was, uh, he is better than you imagined. Yeah. He's more, no, sorry, he's more real than you could imagine. Mm -hmm. uh, he's better than you could have believed. He's more powerful than you thought possible. Yeah. Trust him. Trust him. He's better than your worst day. Amen. All right. I think I think we're done, Jody. Yeah? You Feels ready to go good. to bed? Feels good. 
<laughs> she, she's excited. I, I she's feel excited. I'm feeling good about this. And and guys, you can keep commenting and all that kind of stuff. We'll go back and yeah, and we'll comment on, on your stuff. And um, we just love you guys. Thank you for sticking around. Yes, we do. I don't have we a giveaway tonight, but maybe maybe your mug. We give our mug. <laughs> the mug away. is. The mug is getting sad. We'll get it it's totally, gotten old already. We'll get it totally sanitized. And... <laughs> no, no you, so leave it as is. You drink, you drink out of this, you'll get healed. Yeah, that's right. For real. <laughs> it's like your shadow. <laughs> that's like... right. <laughs> <laughs> but um, uh, but anyway, we we just love you guys, and 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 if you're dealing with something, I see people they're actually putting uh, prayer requests in in the comments. So and Sarah awesome. is doing great, actually typing out a prayer. Um, and so, so instead of, I, I challenge you guys, instead of just saying prayers on the thing or throwing up the emoji, I, I cha- I do challenge you to actually type out a prayer for that person mm-hmm. so they know what you prayed for and we can, uh, we yep. can be in agreement together on all these Or spend things. just a minute when the broadcast ends yeah. and pick one and yeah. whoever you're with say, we're praying over this one right now Absolutely. and just begin to pray out loud, Yeah. partner in faith with somebody, integrate, integrate, yeah. integrate it. and let's see things transformed. Yes. In Jesus' name. <laughs> and Sarah said, it looks like a mold of his face. That's why I got it for him. Just a little bit more pale than me, but it's, it's okay. <laughs> we couldn't get a tan one. <laughs> <laughs> I'll go paint it That's in, my, in my pottery good. shop, you know. Anyway, we love you guys, and uh, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Oh. I nearly made a mess up. Okay. Tomorrow night in Durant. Yes is our first Wednesday Wednesday service. Dr. Pastor Terry Brown Mm -hmm. from our Sherman campus is going to be here. Our first Wednesday is always our dwelling place style Mm -hmm. service, which just means that it's a time where we uh, focus a lot more uh, the entirety of the service on Mm -hmm. uh, worship, prayer, uh, and flowing in the gifts of the Holy Spirit. So I would, I would encourage you, if you're in the area and you're believing for a miracle, mm-hmm. you're believing for breakthrough, you're believing from a touch, for a touch from the Lord, mm-hmm. uh, come out tomorrow night. I know it's going to be powerful, yeah. and uh, I know God's going to do awesome things. And, and I believe Sherman does the same thing. Uh, hold on. Do they have a worship night on Wednesday, first Wednesday still? I need to figure that out. That's a good question. <laughs> a good question. Uh, but Sherman does start at 6.30, regardless Wherever of what they're are. doing. From wherever um, you are. Yes, from wherever you, do you are. Do you know if they do? They do? They do. Yes. Yep. Well, I mean, they have a normal service. Yeah. Okay. Every Wednesday. Yeah. Every Wednesday. Yeah. So, so Sherman is also mm-hmm. also there on 6.30 p.m. I need to look this up before I start trying to yep. talk about it. Yeah, I know, but, I know they have a yeah, midweek service at They have a midweek yeah. service, but I, I'm just not sure what is happening. Um, and uh, so anyway... We'll see you guys later. Thank you. Now you can obviously tell I'm getting tired. I don't know how to talk anymore. Words. So anyway, we love you guys, and we will see you later. See ya.